again. Let me welcome everybody. Welcome to the Future Trends Forum. Today, we have an experiment. We have a fascinating scenario exercise that I'm really looking forward to on a great topic that should really stretch everyone's imaginations. See, we here at the Forum, we believe that we always want to have new and different practices. We want to make sure that we can have all kinds of experiments as the technology evolves. And today's session is partly the brainchild of our friend Brent Anders. Hello, Brent. Hello. Nice to be on here. Good to see you. What time is it in Armenia today, I should ask? Uh, right now it's 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Thank you for staying up so late with us. <laughs> really. And, and having your suit and tie and looking bright and shiny. Yeah. yeah. Much, much appreciated. Much appreciated. <laughs> So our, our idea was we wanted to have a, uh, a kind of scenario exercise where we work through the a possible future of artificial intelligence. And we've kept the nature of that scenario secret until now. So I just want to walk you through it. And then what's and in fact, let me just tell you how this is all going to work out. So first of all, what we're going to describe for you is a scenario for the next year for the possibility of a new wave of artificial intelligence. And then the way we're to work with it is we're going to introduce that to you. We're going to sketch it out and then take some questions about how you think it might work. And then we're going to break you up into small groups. So each of you could think about how this might impact you and how you can react. And the you is you in your current professional role. If you're a university president, a college professor, a campus technologist, a librarian, a student, a trustee, or where you'd like to be in a couple of years. So put your brains together and think about that. And then we're going to come back and share back. And then about halfway through the hour, we're going to give you the second installment of the scenario as the scenario keeps developing. And then we're going to repeat that. We're all going to th ask questions and then go back into groups and then share back. At the very last few minutes, we'll share overall reflections about how this went for you, what you learned and what you think. Um, before I throw the switch on the uh, on the scenario, any questions from anybody? Uh, I should ask a couple of you, by the way, in the uh, those of you who are our friends who are in Texas, like uh, Melanie. I hope you're staying uh, nice and cool. Um, I'm hearing that you guys may be hitting some electrical power problems. I'm not seeing any questions, Brent. Brent, do you have any anything you want to add about how we make this run uh, before <laughs> I? No, the, the, just the other big thing about this is that this is a scenario, right? So some of my background deals with military. So we would do things like this a lot where we would create a situation. So that's the way you really need to view this. And of course, this is an excellent uh, instructional pedagogy as well, because what we're trying to do is make an emotional connection. So the more that you can put yourself within this scenario, the better so that you could have this real thought provoking aspect of, what would we do if this situation were true? Excellent. That's really, really well put. Thank you. Thank you. Well, without any further ado, here is the scenario. And by the way, just a couple of guidelines. Um, as I mentioned, play your current role or what, like, what, you, what role you'd like to take. Uh, think about your responses in terms of practicality, what you'd like to do realistically, as long as with vision, what this means for you conceptually. And be ready to collaborate. Talk with people here. Everyone will have great perspectives and great ideas. Um, Sarah, glad that worked. Very good. And uh, hello to Ireland. Good to see you in Sligo. Okay. So what I'd like you to imagine is that artificial general intelligence appears in the world. And this is different from what we've seen so far of artificial intelligence. AGI means intelligence like human beings capable of moving from domain to domain, having conversations with people, reaching out and acting in the world. We don't currently have this in reality as of September 2023, although ChatGPT looks like it can come close at times. The company behind ChatGPT would like to do that. That's what OpenAI is all about. But in our scenario, we posit that it appears next year. It doesn't come from the United States. It doesn't come from China. It comes from Europe. So our background of this is we'd like you to imagine that over the next year, uh, an academic collaboration has been working on a tool they call Rossum. And Rossum begins as a virtual world's participant. That is a bit of software that can inhabit a world like 
Roblox or like Minecraft, but then it can interact with people in a way that's convincing as another player. And it can also work in that world. It can play in the world. It can add and subtract content. And in our scenario, the team behind Rossum gets better and better at this. And they move Rossum from device to device, from platform to platform. They're able to have it be a full human-like participant in virtual worlds. And they add to it some interesting modules, one for initiative, that is, right now, if you use ChatGPT, it only responds to you when you input things. But here, Rossum actually goes off and does things on its own. And one of those things it does is it learns, and it tries to study and to get more information, including by researching the web. The academic collaboration here has questions. Have, have they actually created artificial general intelligence or not? Well, helping them in the spring of 2024 is a European startup partnership, uh, which decides that they may have figured out artificial general intelligence. They invest in this and they rebrand this as Rossum, your digital companion, and they publish it as a mobile app. And it goes into the world. And Rossum becomes very, very popular very, very quickly. People give it Turing tests. That's um, uh, Turing's idea of not being able to tell if something is human or not when it types back to you. In this case, Rossum passes that, and people start declaring the aware to be actually the achievement of artificial general intelligence. And Rossum as a service reaches into the world. So it starts scanning the web for more and more information to learn and starts requesting more options in the physical world as well. So the first question I want to ask you all is, what questions do you have about Rossum and how this plays out? What background questions? Uh, in the chat, uh, James Danibale says it's like they have a training area in the Matrix movies. Nice parallel, very, very similar, uh, except the different, imagine that training area fully fleshed out you know, as a gigantic um, uh, Roblox world or a gigantic um, Minecraft server. Uh, and yes, uh, Sarah, this is a good point. Um, Rossum is uh, actually quite uh, friendly with GDPR um, and is so far better um, at uh, privacy issues in general. Edward points out that some humans might not pass a Turing test, quite true. Uh, Lisa Durf notes that information is not the same as critical analysis. True, uh, which is an interesting challenge for Rossum. Is Rossum a super intelligent guy? Not yet. So far, Rossum seems to be on a par with humans, but it is learning. Is an enterprise version available for universities? Kartik, uh, that's something that's up on the, that's up for grabs. So in your group, you want to mention that. Uh, Brian asks, is there any other objective other than continuing to learn? Uh, right now, continuing to work with human beings. Is Rossum free? Uh, Jason, good question. Uh, there's a freemium model uh, where you can get a lot of stuff for it from free or you can pay for some things like removing ads. Uh, Phil, the uh, who's paying for it was this European startup. Uh, and so far, it's hard to tell who a lot of its investors are. Colleen, uh, what it means to reach out into the world, what it wants to learn, uh, it can do web searches, uh, it can download material that's in the open web, and it can put out requests to copyright owners for the use of copyright materials. It would also uh, like to use physical sensors, uh, such as cameras, microphones, and so on. Uh, Robert, it has some baked in rules guiding it, um, but so far those rules are largely opaque. Uh, Rossum is not open source, uh, and it's not the back of it is not publicly available. Uh, Sarah points out, uh, since it's GDPR compliant, uh, it has to give you the right to be forgotten. Yes, and it can erase your uh, discussion, um, your interaction with it, and you can also ask it to not consider you in its research. Uh, Melanie asks if Rossum has the capability to add its own modules. Yes, uh, it can add its own code and it can grow that. Uh, Donald asks, what goals is it given? Uh, right now, all of those. It is basically, you know, as a given individual human has the capacity to become many, many things and to pursue many goals, it has that kind of openness right now. Uh, Wendy asks if, Wesson, if Brossom can create new knowledge. That was hard to say. Um, yes, it can, guided properly, and it might be able to create some on its own. Uh, Robert, Rossum cannot act in the physical world yet, as far as we know, 
um, there it is requesting access to physical sensors. Um, we don't know if the company behind it has experimented with this or anybody else's yet. Uh, about physical, about bias, yes, um, this has guardrails, much like contemporary um, AI does right now. Uh, who's making money from it? So far, that gets funneled right into the startup, Phil. Uh, Greg asks a good question about healthcare and skilled nursing facilities. That's a really, really good one to pursue in small groups, absolutely. Uh, Noah, you ask, are the controls to prevent Russell from being manipulative? Do you mean manipulative in the sense of manipulating human beings to do what it wants? Uh, no, Leon, your question is fine. Don't apologize at all. Good to see it. Uh, Sarah, as far as we know, it is not using our cameras and sensors, as far as we know. Oh, Henry, good question. Uh, Rossum does have accuracy checks. Uh, it constantly checks its output to make sure that it is consistent with what it knows of the world. Uh, Mark Colbert Wilson assumes Rossum is a weapon to identify thought criminals. We have no evidence of that being used so far. Uh, Robert Bell asked, does it have to ask permission before doing something? That's a really good question. Uh, in terms of using in, uh, copyrighted uh, material, yes. In terms of doing anything else, it asks permission. That's a good question if it's part of the guardrails or not. Uh, definition of AGI for this exercise is basically human-like intelligence show. Um, the idea that it has the ability to uh, converse, to explore the world, uh, to interact with other people in a human-like fashion. Right, and both ways, right? Because it can ask questions because it's it's thinking on its own now at a human level. Mm -hmm. Right. Very good. Sarah San Gregorio. Hello, Sarah. Uh, says, what is a CEO company mentioned is the goal of the tool? Uh, making AGI is the goal. Uh, that's that's the main idea right now. Uh, can Rossum spin off versions of itself, uh, Stephen? Doesn't seem why not yet. We haven't seen it happen yet. Uh, Ed asks a very good practical question. Is it tied to particular platforms? Uh, it was released for mobile apps, that is for um, uh, iOS and for Android uh, right now. Uh, Kartik asks, was the training data set mostly Eurocentric? It seems to be so far. Good question. Uh, Noah asks if Rossum can manipulate, can manipulate users. There seems to be guardrails. There seem to be guardrails about that, um, but it just got it just got released. So there's a real question of research for it. Uh, uh, Phil, Ryan, I think you should I think you should move forward and not answer everyone's question because just into like, it. just like right now, there's so much ambiguity with some of these things. Yeah, with the current version, I think part of that should be an, an element in them trying to address certain aspects. Very good. I like this idea. Um, excellent. Um, so I'm going to break you into groups right now. Um, so I'm going to authorize this through Shindig right now. Um, so again, I'd like you to think about how to respond to Rossum in your current role at an institution or the role you'd like to have in a couple of years. So we're going to do this for five minutes. I'm not going to record the silence because that'd be pointless. Uh, Brent and I are going to try and hop around and visit a few groups. But please have at least one of you ready to report back uh, what you think will happen and think how you'd learn about this, what you'd plan on doing, and what your institution would like to do. Okay, so here I will create the groups now, and I'm going to give you about six people in each. And here we go. Now we need to wrap things up from the small group work. And I'd love to hear what you all have found. What have you discovered? What have you determined in terms of how you might reply to everybody here? Yeah. What do you think? All right. Well, I was in one of the groups and they were having some, some heated uh, interactions. So well, what did they say? What were some of the key points? Um, well, uh, do you want to get that from from the group or? Oh uh, yeah, actually, who's in the who's in the group? Who? It was. Let's see here. I was with a group that had um, Milling Hog, uh, Doctor Lisa uh, Durf. Uh, oh no, 
not Lisa Durf. Oh man, yeah. that must have been a terrifying group. Student, uh, a student was in there too. Um, Kartikeya. Oh, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Uh, he had some great points. So we're having all sorts of discussions. So well, I've got to bring Kartik on stage. Yeah, Robert Bell also. I mean, a lot of great, a lot of great uh, talk here. Well, in, in full disclosure, Karthik is a, a brilliant student in, in my program at Georgetown. Um, and he is a very forward thinking student uh, in terms of uh, entrepreneurship, nonprofits, and also AI. Karthik, hello. Hello, hello. Can you, you hear me you? okay? Yes, mm -hmm. fine. Uh, good evening. Are you in Uganda now? I am in Uganda. It's 9.30 p.m. right now. Excellent. Thank you for staying up for us. So what did, what did yeah. your group decide? What were some of the ideas that came to mind? Yeah, I think so. Uh, we actually just started off by how it would affect the normal procedures and processes of a university. So assessments, for example, right? Like uh, if, a, if a chatbot is able to replicate student voice based on its conversations with the student, uh, it sort of goes beyond the existing, existing discussions we've been having about chat GPT where we compare it to a calculator. Here it becomes a paper mill where mm. instead of hiring someone who works for a paper mill, you're employing a chatbot that's able to speak in your voice, uh, generate all of its content based in available information. So basically it's doing research and then also adding on whatever it knows about you to that research. Mm -hmm. So it's like me submitting a paper to you, but it's written by a chatbot which knows me and which knows your resources. So that was something that came up. Uh, then we were thinking about university services, whether it could change some of those. Career advising, for example. Wow. I think with AGI, aptitude tests become much more easier because if I'm constantly engaging with the chatbot, that means the chatbot does have a sense of who I am, what I am interested in. And it could give me feedback on anything related to mental health, career advising, other services that the university sort of offers. Sure, it really could. And, um, and I, I want to chime in. The honor that, code came it, up. It was really interesting how in in this conversation that they went from like a a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde aspect, right? Because it's like first we started off saying things about wow, this new conscious type of AI could be now within one system it could be an awesome instructor with so many different aspects of pedagogy. It could be the advisor. It could be uh, instructors on multiple different types and, and different levels of understanding. And it could be all the, it could be a counselor. It could be you know, all these different services that it could provide. And then we switch it to the other end as far as, well, now, since it knows so much about me, it could create my entire essay for me. It could create all these things. So it's like for the assessment purposes, even though it, it could function as such a great assessor by knowing you and knowing when to sort of, okay, now let's move on. You're ready to advance to this next level because it knows me so well. But now we have to understand, okay, well, who's assessing us now? If it's the AI that's assessing us, if we could build that in, great. But now if I have to turn around and be assessed by an instructor, are they going to constantly question whether it's me or the AI that created something? Lots of different interesting aspects were so great, but yet so problematic at the same time. Yeah. Fascinating, fascinating. Uh, just, a, just a quick uh, check with everybody. Uh, if, if in the chat, just let me know if, if, you, uh, if you're okay with me summarizing this and getting some extracts from the chat on a blog post. Um, I, I'll, I'll take your names off as usual. Just let me know in the chat. Um, those are some, Karthik and Brett, those are some amazing differences. Um, I mean, the, the, the teacher that could be any role and of course, the AI are awesome being able to play any student function at all. Um, that's, a, that's a huge, huge change. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you. Let, let's hear from a, an, another group. I would love to hear, especially, I'd love to hear from the female members of the audience. Um, we've got a lot of guys here. And by the way, Kartik's beard is coming along nicely. But I'd love to hear from, uh, from some more women. Um, please, uh, what, would you, what did you discover in your groups? Uh, Ed asks a good question. Does Rossum have gender? Um, and right now, the name, um, if uh, John Hollenbeck caught the literary reference there, uh, is to a male scientist uh, more than a century ago. Um, but right now, uh, 
people can talk across them into uh, being various genders. Uh, it could be Emily Rossum if we like. And let me bring up Leanne. Uh, Leanne MacArthur has her hand raised. I actually want to volunteer someone else. Um, Ma oh. Mary from Midlands Tech. I'm sorry. You were okay. you, several of us in the chat were like, Mary, Mary, oh, if you're I'll, willing. I'll draft Mary right now. I'll, I'll bring up Mary. I'll, I'll summon Mary. Is that how that sounds like? Uh, actually, I don't have Mary in the list. There, there you go. There you go. Uh, let me see if I can bring you up. Mary, you have all kinds of fans. <laughs> I, Hello. I, hold on. I'm trying. Am I there? You are here. I, I'm, I'm not sure how I got nominated, but uh, I, I look at it sort of, I'm at a two-year community college, just so mm -hmm. you're aware. And, and mm -hmm. of course, outside of the Center for Teaching Excellence, there was a lot about policing and all of that. But what we're looking, what I'm looking at in particular is figuring out how we assist students, particularly at my level, we're an open um, admission college, which means our faculty get everything from unprepared, underprepared, uh, total across the board. They, they can have anything. And they obviously don't have the background to know how to teach. We talk about remediation. We talk about all these things. We know that remediation courses don't really work at this level because the students mm. never graduate. So we're looking at how we can teach students to use something like this as their own, own learning. But you're talking about assessment in higher ed. How do the students learn to assess their own level of knowledge? So what do they need to know? Can it say, how do we get here? Because you're right, if you ask an instructor to assess you, you take one of those computer courses where everything's taught through third party and then the instructor gives a test the students can't pass because the third party software did it different. We have to make sure that if we're doing this, I think that we are actually teaching the students how to use it as a learning tool, how to use it as an instructional tool in a language that I can understand. Mm -hmm. So you teach me something and I'll use simple concept I used in my group, mitosis and meiosis. Mm -hmm. For some reason, students struggle, right? New students, first year, they don't know what. Well, go to one of these AIs and say, hey, can you explain this to me in uh, football terms? Because I don't get it. Can you? There's so many ways that our students can use it to get it translated into a common enough language that they can process it and begin to integrate it into their own schema. And that's what I'm kind of looking at is how the best assessments are when you assess yourself, determine yourself strong or weak somewhere, and then figuring out the plan to move forward with that. That's what a lot of us do with our learning. Mm -hmm. So how do we teach students wow. who don't have that natural desire to follow that? How do you, how do you, teach them to use this in that manner. Well, that sounds fascinating. Yeah. So, so, I mean, the uh, Karthik and Brent, the, the, the teacher figure that you came up with here becomes even more powerful. Yeah. Um, we, you know, a student could say, please teach me this in my cultural context and then specify what the cultural context Exactly. Would be. Or ask Rossum to figure out what the cultural context would be. Mm -hmm. uh, it, or to compare. I, compare to cultural context. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I mean, think about that. We have so, so much of that. Yeah. It's it's so great to see how we're we're having to think about the future, right? And, and this future possibility to better understand current issues, because that's exactly it. What you're talking about is AI literacy. That's yes. that's like the main thing that I've been working on is that because so many people fail to realize the power that the AI currently has. Yeah. Yes. Currently has. And then if we were to get this time, this level of, of uh, artificial intelligence that as that at a human level like that would be even more beyond. But even right now, so many people don't access it or when they access it and it doesn't give them the result that they want. Oh, AI isn't good enough at all right now. No, you weren't good enough in prompting it correctly. <laughs> Thank you. You yeah. failed to realize that you can continue on with the conversation, dig deeper, understand even more. 
Yeah, there's there's AI literacy. Thank you for bringing that up because that's such a key key con component. Well, we uh, we hear AI compared to calculators so much. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. my background is electrical engineering, advanced ah, mathematics. Excellent. And you know, <laughs> I think about when I was teaching lower level classes, they come in used to using a regular calculator, and then they mm. meet the Scientific American. Whoa, yeah. with all its graphing. Well, they don't know how to use that right. at all. It's not just the calculator. And when you try to link to do AI that way, I think it does it a uh, uh, an injustice because yeah. it, it's if you're going to liken it to a calculator, you want to think of it as a computer ability to calculate, not the little, you know, four plus four calculator. Right. And now we're talking about something that goes beyond generative AI into artificial general intelligence. Mm -hmm. Mary, thank you for agreeing to be drafted. Um, you're wonderful. Uh, Kartik, thank you so much. Um, we need to advance and take another step forward because this is that was just the first opening move of what happens uh, with Rossum. Now we want to take you a little bit further uh, to the second stage of what happens. Um, so here. I'll put this up here and uh, Brent, why don't you take us forward? Okay. So, so yeah, imagine that now it's a few months later. So this came out in the spring of 2024, but now we're a few months later in that it's the summer of 2024. So just a few months have gone by, but yet things are really escalating very quickly. The startup has now, now has 5 billion or $9 billion that it's been able to instantly bring together. Right. Why? Because this is such a popular thing. Just like ChatGPT was extremely popular when it first came out, and it still is, this would be even more so. Plus, it came out in Europe, but now the Chinese have a version of it. The U.S., the Russians, uh, you know, there's all sorts of different countries that are now starting to have their own versions of this. So now there's starting to be more people understanding this. So there's political pressure to contain or to ban it. And so they're worried about what could be ramifications of this level of AI. There's an open source version now. So it's not just controlled by, let's say, a big company, but there's also open source versions. What does that mean as far as what's going to happen with it? Uh, AGI has now been used in war. So some of you might not know, but current levels of AI, current levels of AI have already been used in war. Uh, where I live at in Armenia, uh, there's a, a neighboring country, there's been land disputes. They've used a special type of missile that gets sent and it flies around. It flies around until it sees a target, it uses AI, and then it activates all on its own, no human control of it. So it's already being implemented, but imagine a system that's way beyond that to a higher cognitive level and how that could be used in war. So that's another aspect to consider. Yes. Uh, is there another slide, Brian? Yeah, okay. Uh, so because of this, of course, many people are gonna be using the AI that they have access to in many different ways just like with ChatGPT. So the markets are in complete turmoil. Uh, people are finding out different ways that they can make money or cause different things to happen within the markets. Religious reactions. Imagine an AI that can talk to you, answer your questions and guide you on all sorts of different paths and you're getting huge benefits from it. Many people will start to think, well, this is the answer to all of my issues. So there's aspects that are going to be happening with religion. It's going to become a religion. It's going to be question. People are going to question their own religion. So there's going to be lots of religious turmoil going on there. Uh, fears of people disappearing into AGI worlds. That's a real concern because with, with virtual reality increasing in its capability. And now the fact that an AGI could be a character within a virtual reality. Yeah. Wow. And now everything could be a perfect scenario, a perfect situation within my virtual world. Why would I ever want to leave? So people will start to be disappearing. They'll be plugged in. And so that's going to cause issues within society in itself. So, of course, there'll be calls for boycotts, pro protests by creators of all kinds for different types of things. Of course, we have a protest going on right now in Hollywood because of AI issues. But think about artwork, uh, authors, uh, of books and magazines, all sorts of different things. There's an article that just came out recently about uh, newscasters in India because they're starting to be replaced by AI newscasters. Hmm. So that's something to think about. It's it's going to spread continually. 
So there's so many different levels of society. How is academia going to react to this? What are we going to do? What are, how are we going to help the situation? How are we going to address future political leaders, future leaders of industry and business, leaders of marketing, leaders of ethics and English? What is academia going to do? Are we going to take a stance? Are we going to, what, what, what's the answer? What's the possibilities? That's the question to think about. Well, thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's really, really nicely done, Brent. In, in the chat, um, we have a comment, academia will panic slowly, which I really like. That's a, that's a good phrase. Um, a, f a few people have been asking questions, but I think a lot of your questions are really getting into how you might be reacting. And also the questions are, are going through all these different strata of society at once. So what I'd like to do is to uh, resume breakouts again. Uh, yeah. And then I'd like you to think now, this is the second round. Now the AGI has gone into the world and you're seeing some of its manifestations and how it's growing. Now, how do you respond uh, in uh, your role or the role that you'd like to have uh, coming up? Um, so here, I'll give you five minutes um, to put your heads together and see what you think. Brent, in the interest of time, I'd like to do a little popcorn exercise. You think we should do that? Sure, yeah. Okay, so let me ask everybody in all of your groups, um, if you could, if at least one of you could turn to the chat. Now, don't, don't type in anything yet. What I'd like you to do, each of you, is to start to type in your one of your takeaways from what your group just talked about. Uh, if you're talking about the labor market or about how plagiarism would change or whichever one. And don't hit return yet, though. Uh, but this is this is one of those text popcorn um, uh, routines, and uh, this can be as many from your group as wants to go. Uh, and then what I'd like you to do, give you a couple seconds here, is once you put in your phrase, I want you all hit return at the same time. I'm going to count down. So get ready with your popcorn. Three, two, one, go. Oh my gosh, look at all of this. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. Ooh. Yeah, some really good ones. Oh, this yeah. is terrific. You're definitely going to need to save that to, to post it somewhere so that we can I'm going to review to, that later. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to have to post it and uh, edit it up a bit so that it's, uh, um, so it's possible. Oh, my gosh. Okay, okay. This is uh, curriculum changes, finding truths uh, do not always help. Uh, information pollution, change fatigue. Yes, 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 yes. Mm. A lot about ethics. Uh, knowledge slipping through our fingers. Um, and a, a few literary references here, including the wonderful E.M. Foster story, The Machine Stops. Uh, let me just, uh, in, in the interest of time and in the interest of hearing from all of you, uh, let me just ask uh, if someone wants to volunteer to come up on stage or if you'd like me to flash your observation on the screen uh, for the latter, please uh, uh, type in the um, Q&A box or for the former, just uh, click the raised hand. Uh, Daisy asks a good question, but Daisy, I have a question for you. Daisy asks, how long do we want it to survive? The question is, uh, which it, Daisy? Uh, Stephen Crawford observes the foundation of society may be shattered and a higher red will need to respond by helping fix that foundation. Mm -hmm. ah, what a view, what a vision. Thank you. Yeah, my, my group was, uh, was talking all about the, the aspects of, of the university itself, right? Will we still have a university? If we can have an AI that can be all these things, I yeah. can be a professor for every single topic. So then we started talking about, well, then we would need level, different ways of doing accreditation, like that you have credits, that you have a degree. Is that going to matter? How will it matter? Oh, All sorts of different things to think about. This could be a hard reset for education as we know it. Um, well, let's see, we have a couple of people who've raised their hands. Let me bring a couple of them up. And this is uh, Stephen Crawford. Hello, sir. Hello, how you doing? All right, good to see you. And I brought the beard. Um, 
Excellent. You know, one of the Excellent. one of the things is like I saw in the scenario about war, and my first thought was the movie War Games and the conclusion of the only yeah. winning move is not to play. And so part of me is sitting there imagining I could see a generative AI system, if it was allowed to control military resources, may actually turn around and do the opposite of what we expect and not kill all humans, but actually say, hold on a second, this is not the best way to go about things. And then potentially go a step further and say, let's do some climate change here and let's start, you know, and maybe do some hard decisions that we're unable to make and and start yeah. to reverse the climate change and that's where i talk about shattering uh the foundation because I, I imagine if aliens visit the earth not invade but actually came mm -hmm. to visit and have a conversation how many world religions would shatter suddenly going wait a minute something came out of the sky and is now talking to us and it's not who we thought it was mm -hmm. um you know i i you know you, there's just so many pieces there and i think that's part of what I think we're looking at is that we're looking at a complete societal shift. Higher ed could have a whole different role um, that could look something more like out of foundation of all things, you know, where it's more of storing knowledge and, and guiding and helping the AI learn and helping, you know, preserve knowledge for future generations more than anything else. Uh, 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 uh. I wonder how we would approach the problem of preservation of knowledge. Which is a, which is a deep it's, one. it's it's very funny that you just brought that up, Brian, because I just got off of a, a, an interview with a, a group in, in L.A. that uh, they're very interested in that. So they're looking at ways to address ensuring that current information that is real isn't going to be deep faked. So they're trying to figure out different ways of like maybe with NFTs or maybe in some other ways in order to ensure that that data and information is locked because it ties in with historical information. You know, if, if we say that this place was built at this time and several nations agree to that, we don't want some rogue nation to come in and say, no, that's wrong. And then they use AI to build a case against it. So we preservation of information is a key thing that is starting to be definitely looked at. Yeah. And that's, I think, I think that's a big concern is that we keep thinking of a single one like like Rossum was, but right. as you, as this scenario presents, if multiple countries present multiple AIs, they're going to reach different conclusions because they're coming off different data sets. Right, and want to create their own versions of history, of information, of reality. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, Stephen, thank you. That's a, a lot coming from you. And I hope, by the way, very seriously, I hope you're staying cool. Um, I, I am this week. We we've lost power a couple of times due to the equipment failing and the heat, but uh, we've. I wow. think we're on the on the good side of it here in Phoenix, finally, where it's only going to be in the mid hundreds, <laughs> not the one fifteens. Oh my gosh! Please, please be safe. And, and oh yeah, we're, thank you, uh, Brent. I'm I'm a little concerned that we only have two minutes left, um, and and we have so many so many comments and so many ideas. Um, I'm I'm curious. I mean, so, someone who's doing so much professional work on on AI. Um, and writing books and giving workshops and speaking around the world. What are your, some of your reflections about the process we just went through this past hour? Yeah, uh, so I'm very glad that uh, one person brought up that this aspect of having to change their, their policies, right? And that's going to be an ongoing thing because it's just like what we're saying with current levels of chat GPT, all universities should be changing their policy to address aspects of AI. Now, having done that, what happens when we have this level of AI that's beyond ChatGPT, that's human level? Now, what are we going to do? And then, of course, we all want to worry and say, well, now it's the AI doing things and it's not really the student, but we have to prepare them for a world in which their work is going to require them to use that AI. So they're going to have to be able to yeah. have the AI be part of who they are and what they do in order to be able to succeed in the workplace. So it's this really mm -hmm. weird situation that we're in, in academia, that so many universities so far are just waiting and see. I'm gonna wait and see. That's what I get from a lot of universities throughout the world to include developed nations. In fact, developing nations are seem to be doing more than Western nations, right? It's such a weird situation because they're seeing it, they're looking at the opportunities that AI yeah. is going to provide, so they're jumping all over it. They're the ones that are flying me out. They're the ones that are wanting me to do webinars because they realize how important it is. 
A lot of the Western countries are just, ah, let's just wait. Let's, oh, that's let's interesting. Just go with what we're doing. It's a very interesting situation. Oh, so in, 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 our, in our second phase of our scenario, having not just the U.S. and China, but uh, also countries that are not as high in the development arc, uh, India and Russia as producers of, of, of competitors to Russia, uh, but then the usage being um, across the global south. Uh, th this is great. Um, Friend, just if you if you can in the chat, just uh, just if you could just put in a couple of words about what you thought of this exercise, how it went, what we could do differently or better, uh, I would love to hear from that. Uh, Brent, I just want to say thank you so much for being a great co-host, co-conspirator, and for coming up with this. Thank you. No, this is a great uh, situation, great experience. If anyone wants more information about what I'm doing, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would love to it's develop a, a greater community of inquiry where we can continue to have these type of discussions and work with Brian on, on sort of all sorts of different possibilities. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Brian. And get, get some sleep. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, but friends, uh, none of you have slept. All of you have been torrents of energy. I really, really admire all of the ideas, the practicality, the wisdom, the creativity that you brought to bear on this subject. Um, we're going to, uh, as, as soon as I can dig out from under, I'm going to uh, post this, uh, well, the, the video and then the, a blog post with more of this. But thank you for thinking together with us. If, if this has worked, uh, we'd be happy to do a few more such exercises on the forum. Um, if your minds are buzzing right now and you'd like to keep talking about all of this, uh, please head over to social media where we have a few different presences. In fact, I'm pretty much everywhere. Here's Twitter and Mastodon. Uh, use the hashtag FTTE to keep going. Uh, if you'd like to look into our previous sessions for inspiration, just go to our archive at tinyurl.com slash fdfarchive or uh, go to the forum website. Also, on the forum website, you can see our other topics coming up, uh, which uh, some of which don't touch AI for the first time in a while. Everything from academic Twitter, educational technology, to labor organizing and ungrading. Uh, if you'd like to get more information about AI, I'm still writing at Substack. So just go to aiandacademia.substack.com and I've got a whole series of posts coming up. Uh, and thank you all again. Um, I know those of you in the Northern Hemisphere, some of you have been experiencing some extraordinary heat, um, as we mentioned in this hour. I hope you all stay safe and well. Uh, for everybody, I hope the fall semester, um, or at least the late 2023 semester, is treating you well. Um, I wish you all the best. Look forward to continuing to think with you together, and we'll see you next time online. Bye-bye. <laughs>